the Phantom Spear 120 SE from Thermalright. It has seven heat pipes, a copper cold plate, and sells for around 40 USD. But is it any good? Yes. Yes, it is. What's up everyone, Eric here and welcome to Hardware for Gamers. For those of you who are new to the channel, I test and review PC cases, CPU coolers, PC case fans, and video cards. Now before I get into the overview, just to have full disclosure, Thermalrite did send me over this cooler to test and review, but as always, all opinions expressed in this video are mine. Now this video was supposed to come out last week, but I was sick all last week, so I got nothing done. And apparently right now we're being attacked by a forest fire. So I'm not sure how bloodshot my eyes are right now, but they are stinging like mofos. So yeah, onto the overview. There are two versions of the Phantom Spirit. There is the Phantom Spirit 120 SE and the Phantom Spirit 120 SE ARGB. These sell for something like 44 to 51 USD, depending on which seller you look at on amazon.com. You can find it for a little bit more or a little bit less, I think as well. So yeah, let's go over what you get in the box. It comes with the heatsink and fans, of course. There is the installation guide, two sets of fan clips, a small tube of thermal compound, the mounting hardware for AMD and Intel, as well as a Y cable so that you can connect the two fans into one fan header. Okay, taking a closer look at the heatsink, there are seven six millimeter continuous heat pipes. They are copper heat pipes with a nickel plating. The coal plate is also copper with a nickel plating. Moving on to the fans. These fans are Thermalrite's new CLC12 V2 fans. The B stands for black. These fans are four pin PWM fans. They have nine blades, they have little rubber pads on each of the corners, and they have a max rated RPM of 1500. The dimensions of this cooler with the fans attached is 154 millimeters high by 125 millimeters wide by 136 millimeters deep. Based off these dimensions, you will have ram clearance issues with the fan being on the front. And that 154 millimeter height is based off of a dim clearance of 42. So most non ARGB dims will fit here based off these dimensions, which is nice to see. But based off these dimensions, there's really no point going with an ARGB dim because it's just going to be covered by the fan. For socket compatibility, the Phantom Spirit 120 SE is compatible with most mainstream Intel sockets but it is not compatible with their HPC lineup. For AMD, it is compatible with AM4 and AM5, but is not compatible with Threadripper. Moving on to how to install this CPU cooler, I will be installing this cooler onto an AM4 motherboard. The installation between Intel and AMD sockets is different, so if you are planning to install this on an Intel socket, please check the installation guide. As always, before you start, make sure you have a flat, clean, and sturdy surface. You should also have a mat, preferably an anti-static mat, but in a pinch, you can always use the box that your motherboard came in. You will also need a PH2 screwdriver, and you should also have some isopropyl alcohol and something to wipe the CPU with. Plus, to install this cooler onto an AM4 or AM5 motherboard, you will need the backplate that came with your motherboard. With the backplate flat on the mat and the CPU installed into the motherboard, align the mounting holes on the motherboard to the backplate. With the motherboard flat, place the AMD plastic spacers over each of these holes, then find the AMD mounting bars and the AMD mounting screws. Place the mounting screws through the holes on the mounting bars, then align the mounting screws with the plastic spacers that are on the motherboard. Once you have, screw the mounting screws into the holes on the backplate, making sure that the mounting bars are facing in. Once the mounting bars are installed, it's time to clean off the CPU with some isopropyl alcohol, then apply the provided or your own thermal compound to the CPU's IHS. Now making sure to remove the fans from the heatsink and the sticker from the bottom of the cold plate. Once you have, place the heatsink cold plate down onto the CPU's IHS. Making sure to align the screw threads on the mounting bars to the spring retention screws on the fastening bar. 
screw the two spring retention screws on the fastening bar to the mounting bars. Once that's done, you can install the fans onto the heatsink and plug the PWM connectors from the fans to the Y cable. Once you've done that, you can plug the Y cable into the CPU fan header on your motherboard. And that's the installation, nice and simple. Moving on to the fan's PWM range. So at 100%, the motherboard is showing the RPM of these fans at 1520-ish with a DBA of 36.6. And as always, that is taken from 20 inches away on an open air test bench. Dropping the PWM down to zero, this motherboard is showing the RPM at 400-ish, and this has the DBA at or below my noise floor of 32. Now before I get to the temperature charts, if you are liking this video and appreciate all the testing that I've done here, can you then please consider supporting the channel by using my Amazon Associates links in the description. All you need to do is click on the link that suits your location and then add an item or items to your cart and order them, and the channel will get a small kickback at no added cost to you. Plus, if you have any questions on how I test the CPU coolers, please watch my CPU cooler testing methodology video. It's where I go over the how and what of my CPU cooler testing. I'll put a card above and I'll also have it linked in the description. Okay, with that out of the way, on to the temperature charts. So with the Phantom Spirit in the 35 dBA noise equalized 87 watt test, the CPU steady state temperature averaged out to be 70.8 C, which has it tying the NHD15, which costs twice as much as this thing. So all in all, that's pretty good for the Phantom Spirit 120. Letting the fans run at full speed had the temperature drop by only 0.4 C to 74.4 C. So really not much of a temperature difference between the 35 dBA and full speed tests here. Moving on to the 150 watt testing. The Phantom Spirit in the noise equalized testing had a steady state CPU temperature of 75.5 C which is inside the margin of error of the NHD15. So again, they are pretty much tying here. Then letting the fans run at full speed had the average CPU steady state temperature drop to 74.7 C. So only a 0.8 Celsius difference between the 35 dBA and full speed tests, which means again, really not much of a difference here. So what do I think of Thermalrite's Phantom Spirit 120 SE? Its performance is really good, and it's priced really well. As I show in the charts, the Phantom Spirit 120SE is extremely similar in performance to Noctua's NHD15. And that is in both noise level performance and in actual, like, just straight temperatures. Which is pretty insane to think about since the Phantom Spirit 120SE is half the price of the NHD15. Now, as with all Thermorite coolers, the Phantom Spirit 120SE has an issue, and that is that Thermorite has all these coolers priced very close to one another, likely too close to one another, because it will slash does cause confusion for the average person who is looking to buy a CPU cooler. The Phantom Spirit 120 SE performs better than the Peerless Assassin 120 SE does, but they're priced pretty much the exact same. Now the Peerless Assassin 120 SE is also louder and then doesn't perform as well. This is likely because of the C12C fans that it comes with. So by Thermalrite releasing the Phantom Spirit 120 makes the Peerless Assassin 120 kind of pointless now. Or maybe they are planning to discontinue the Peerless Assassin, but there's still so much stock out there right now that it will definitely cause confusion for a lot of people since they are still priced so similarly. And again, I'm feeling like a broken record. Pricing might be different in your area, so it really does come down to the availability and pricing in your area for what makes the most sense for you. But yeah, all in all, the Phantom Spirit 120 SE is a really good cooler for a really good price. And I guess that's really all there is to say. So that is all that I have for this one. If you liked the video, please give it a thumbs up. And if you're still watching and you haven't already, please hit that subscribe button and the bell icon so you get notified whenever I drop a new video. There is also the HFG Discord server. It is completely free to join. All you need to do is agree to the server rules and you'll get to view all of my charts. 
A link is in the description. There is also Patreon if you'd like to support the channel directly. Again, a link is in the description. Uh, you may want to check out these videos here. Uh, it'll probably be a link to the my fan testing playlist or my fans that I've tested playlist. Uh, and as always, thank you very much for watching and see you next time. And a, uh, ooh, okay, Zoa, that, okay.